Brief update. We've now got an awning. This is an F80S. The F65 wasn't available according to Jackson's Leisure. It's on. I didn't film putting it on because it was a pain. Only because the bolts at that end and the bolts at that end are blind into the uh, roof lining and I really really struggled to get my fingers to where the nuts need to go. These are the easy ones because I've got access through a light fitting. Uh, the other bolt is the bolt holding down the unistrut for the solar panel. So they were easy to do. But the two at the front, the ones that really matter, because if this thing hits anything, I ended up cutting a couple of ovals there and then threading bolts and nuts through using pieces of heat sink um, on the end of the thread to, as a device to pull the bolt through. And I was able to actually uh, eventually get to them. But just getting four bolts in that hole there and washers and holding it all together while I put nuts on was trying my patience a bit um, but uh, it didn't help the fact that the aluminium that I was trying to work with and drill holes into was at an angle and directly above where the rail is for the sliding door but uh, yeah a few blue words putting those in but it's done now and the other bolts are in the outside locker and again to get them where I needed, they're about five inches in from where that light fitting went. Um, again, that bolt there is for the uni strut, but those four bolts, not such a pain net to get in, but still awkward to get a spanner on too. Um, took ages, frankly, took absolutely ages. But the good thing is, this F80 awning fits the standard F65 brackets I'd already bought. And I will be using this awning. It's 3.7 metres long. I bought it specifically because it fits this van perfectly. And I will be able to fit it onto the roof of Thistle shortly. Using a sprinter specific set of brackets. And that, again, economies of scale. One awning, two purposes. I've also replaced the central locking actuator that was inside this external locker door. It had been disconnected, it was faulty, the gears had gone. I managed to find the exact identical part on um, some obscure European shopping site. Um, seven pounds delivered from China and it works. So we now have a functional locker again. Still need to find a suitable light to fit on there. But the central locking now works on all the doors as it should. So uh, that's one less little job done. The F80 awning has a lower profile than the F65 and there's a piece of metal that uh, is slightly lower than the mounting brackets. So I wasn't sure the thing was actually going to fit on this roof because this uh, roof has got all this... Um, uh, you can see the, the plastic moulding or aluminium mouldings. So you've got to raise that. So I created this wooden profile just to replicate the edge and the curvature of the roof. And I realised that the awning was going to strike about there. If I mounted the brackets anywhere along here, or even over the edge here slightly, the awning was going to catch here. So this is a bit of plastic out of thistle. It was the original plastic liner. That fits in that slot nicely there. And that takes out that um, difference in height. And then this is a product called Stopboard. It's six millimetres. Um, it's a plastic recomposite product, um, it's serrated or whatever you call this um, um, diamond effect, so glue takes it very, very nicely. I then mounted that, like that, and that gave me a flat platform for the brackets to, to be mounted on uh, there, which brought the edge of the awning flush with the van. Um, so effectively I've got two layers of plastic, plus the awnings, plus what, one, two, three um, layers of uh, Sikaflex in between each one, um, and the bolts. And that mounted the awning so that the metalwork followed this curve properly, and I've got it flush there. 
bit of fiddling around, but it was necessary to get a, a good fit. And I'll see if I can film that up there now. So hopefully this will focus. You can see that um, metal protrusion there. It's just touching this corner piece, which um, has been clobbered and needs to be repaired when I get this van painted, um, probably next year. But that protrusion doesn't appear on the F65, and that meant I had to space this up very slightly. Um, so you can see the, the mounted brackets. These are universal brackets designed for flat roofs. Um, the bit of plastic and the bit of um, stock board as well and that just gets this thing it's just touching this quadrant here this corner piece because that's actually slightly harder than the rest but there is actually a can you see it yeah see there's a slight gap and the actual awning itself is pretty flush with the roof I didn't want to go for one that's mounted on the side like the F45 because I want to keep all these lights and of course the F45 wouldn't have fitted on the other van so it had to be one it had to be this model or the 65 um, they've lowered the profile of this, it's nothing like as tall as far as I can work out of the S65, it's supposed to be more aerodynamic, not sure it really matters to be honest. Um, and then there's the solar panel now, completely finished. Two three metre pieces of Unistrut, couldn't get any longer, it would be nice if I could get the Unistrut right to the end here, um, because I may well put some more panels up here one day, but um, let me just pause while I uh, stand up. The last piece of uni strut isn't really 100% necessary. Well, that solar panel is probably perfectly okay just on those two pieces there. But because I'm going to build a deck across the back there using um, a plastic uh, decking board product, uh, it'll do a dual purpose. I'm going to put some tie downs so if we need to take a tent or anything, we can tie it on the roof. Um, the deck itself will provide somewhere to sit. That aerial point at the back there is where the uh, TV, TV master is going to go. I've got a um, Vision Plus unit, which I'm going to put through that hole there. And that little gap there between the outlet from the extractor fan and that piece of unit strut is approximately where the outlet for the gas heater is going to go for instant hot water. But we'll have a small area that uh, I can use. If I can get one deck chair up here just for me, a couple of cushions or something, I don't mind. Uh, but it would be nice to get up here. And then forward here, room for some for smaller soap panels um, if required. Um, they'll be very, very small because um, I think the narrowest width is about 700mm. Should be able to get one over there. Won't get one in this gap here. So um, maybe two in that corner there might work. Um, or I take that big panel off and we put in lots of small ones. But um, time will tell for that. At the moment I bought this I bought this solar panel, so this was um, the best I could do with what I'd already bought. It, it was too big. Should have bought small well, I have bought smaller now for the other van. Um, but this one is doing the job admirably for this van. Um, I've had it connected up for the past week to this ring charger. I'm standing on the scaffold tower by the way. So if if um, if, if, if everything stops then I'm dead. Because I've Ironically, at that moment, the battery went flat, <laughs> so I'm not dead, and I didn't fall off. But this ring, ring charge has been sitting in here now for um, a week, um, just with the PV input, and just with the engine battery connected to the, um, effectively the, the auxiliary output. It doesn't need uh, a battery DC input itself, it can function perfectly okay as an auxiliary battery charger. Um, I thought maybe it wouldn't work unless it was actually connected to the vehicle battery, uh, but I'm using it to keep the vehicle battery charged. Um, it's um, hovering, um, just doing the float charge at the moment. 150 quid or whatever I paid for it. I'm not going to complain about that. The Sterling Power products and other products, you can pay three, four times the price for a B2B charger. Whether it lasts a test of time, I don't know, but it's not particularly heavy. I can put some, uh, what do you call them, Dean's connectors on some cabling here and I can make this completely portable so I can swap between the two vans. Um, I may buy just a small cheap MPPT tracker type charger just to keep the batteries running when, when this is out but um, expensive items, well relatively expensive items like this, I want to use in both vehicles as best I can.
Um, so if I can make the connection, connections easily um, disconnectable, mount it on Zeus Fasten or something, um, we'll see. May not work, may end up permanently fixed, but I want to. <laughs> I want to try and use some of these bits and pieces I've bought. Um, also on eBay, I bought a couple of these. Stupidly cheap, about three pounds. It's a USB charger. It's rated at um, three amps. That's a reasonably good charge rate. The daft thing about this camera is it doesn't charge on USB, which is really stupid. So I've got to connect it to the mains mode with a buy a new battery. But this has also got a digital voltage output. That's quite handy. I don't know how much current this thing draws when it's actually plugged in. It may not be sensible to leave it plugged in all the time. But just to give you an idea, without having to go out and buy specific bits of kit, um, and just what the auxiliary battery voltage is, this is more than adequate. You know, I don't need to have this thing, for example, in the van if I can put it behind the seat somewhere. Um, but I do want to know what's going on. And something like this, um, plus obviously the Bluetooth connectivity that I'm going to have on my Victron inverter, will give me a lot of it. Give me some information. Um, I want to get some similarly discreet, small, inexpensive devices to monitor the gas levels and also the water levels. But I don't want to go mad with dirty great displays all over the shop.